What is going down, everyone? It's time for the hype, episode number one. 95 man we're only five away from episode 200 we got some exciting stuff to talk about today wander lighten up the baseball world we're gonna talk about him we're gonna talk about the best prospects in the hobby we're also gonna end it off with a little guess that price a little impromptu short guess that price so get your answers ready for that uh so lots of stuff going down mojobreak.com we're breaking select baseball today uh we got stadium club baseball on friday as well uh all, also all the other stuff is being broken as well and i forgot to tell c-rad we got mosaic collegiate in stock as well so whenever you want to do that brand new mosaic collegiate football in stock so um, mosaic collegiate football yeah debut edition was that is that a normal release uh, or was it through the uh, website it was, only it was it was right through panini's website yeah mm, the awesome. duchy dan got down on the duchy so we got that in to the left hand side yeah we have like uh, a fair amount of it okay so, yeah let's go it's only two packs 15 cards a piece one auto in each pack, and a lot of color. So, okay, okay. Um, it looks pretty awesome, so check that out. But uh, Dan, how's it going? You got back from Vegas. How was Vegas, dude? It's Vegas, man. Yeah, we uh, apparently are back to normal. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> that's it. You just yoloing it up in yeah, Vegas. Yeah, I mean, right? it was it was cool, man. It was uh, it was hot. It was like a buck sixteen. Yeah. Um. Gotta, yeah, gotta you know, stay hydrated out there. You gotta, yeah. Uh, don't see on days like that. And I was watching a lot of people carry around the uh, like the slushies that you wear because they're so big. Like oh, the ones, yeah. like they, it's like sixty mm. something ounces. It's like <laughs> strapped around your. <laughs> and it's just filled with sugar and rum. Oh, those are horrible, um, dude. So many people, and every time I see somebody walk the strip, and I'm like, "Why are you?" Isn't it like a guitar or something? Yeah, guitar or like <laughs> just there. There was one. I'm not kidding. It was like four and a half feet tall. I was just they're alcohol. Like, they're just dragging it around. <laughs> then they're dragging themselves around at the end um, of that. But yeah, that is one thing that if you've never been to Vegas on a hot day, like you probably, I know it sounds like a good idea, you know, slurpy with alcohol. It's not going to end well. You're going to ruin. No. You're going to ruin a day or two. You know they have those, and they have those like uh, you're supposed to share it. But I see people not sharing it. Those 105 ounce like big old like margarita thing. Like a like a fish bowl. Yes. Okay. Well, I don't think the fish bowl the fish bowl drink is coming back. I don't think it survived. Oh, well, yeah. I don't think it survived the pandy. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine just? Uh, just 185 ounces and everybody gets a straw bro i think every time i've been to vegas the the i, I usually get the real small one that's like this tall maybe no I've, I've i don't even know what you're talking about the people are wearing it oh dude all the time everywhere what, it, what I, I do they're wearing describe what it is they're wearing uh like a bot like a it's a bottle or is it like a design of like is it a guitar or? no they have the guitar ones you keep on bringing up the guitar well, ones but yeah they yeah. they have the guitar ones but they also have it's like a it goes around your neck or something. It's it think of it as like a huge giant plastic like martini glass mm. that's like super long and it has like a lanyard and you wear it around your neck. It's like the yard house yard. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And okay. and you have like a crazy straw attached to it and it's like yeah, yeah. I think after thirty, it is sugar in my alcohol. It just doesn't it doesn't mix. Man. I do. I, mean, it, I drink. It doesn't end well. Like I was said. drinking this crazy crazy elixir. It's called beer. Um, <laughs> wow, what a concept. It's good. Yeah. It's good. It's yeah. good. Coors Lights? Coors Lights. Nice. I mean, <laughs> never go wrong. There, I mean, there ain't... There ain't is nothing, beer, is that new? There ain't nothing better than just Blue Mountains. <laughs> Got that aluminum layer that really locks in that Rocky Mountain taste. <laughs> yeah, that seems like a dangerous amount of sugar and alcohol. Yeah. yeah, I don't think I if if my day has ever started with one of those, like he said, it never usually ends well. You know, those are fun to have, like maybe like and I said in small amounts, but not anything like we're, what you're describing. No, that seems insane, amounts, dude. Yeah. yeah, you. If it's anything north of sixteen ounces, it's a bad idea. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. But yeah, um, it was cool though. You think you only had one drink, but in all reality, you had like fifteen. Yeah, you and, know, you, so, and you had and you feel good about yourself. I only had one drink, and you had like probably 15. about seven hundred and fifty grams of sugar. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot, a lot of sugar going through. You want a diabetic but, uh, coma at that point? It's uh, it's it's legit. I went and saw a comedy show. That was 
you know. Oh, it was a Manikowsko, right? Manikowsko. Yeah, he's great. He's good on stage. He's great. Uh, very physical comedian. Yeah. Um, yeah. Besides that, I mean, it was, it was like 2019. Nice. I'll be there Friday, so I will be signing flats for anybody that's in in the area. So come and hit me up on the IG, and I'll be out there. I don't sign jerseys, but Wait, flats. You're going to uh, you're going to be in Vegas. I'm in Vegas on Friday. Yeah. Lucky man, yeah. you guys are lucky man. Friday. I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm planning a Vegas trip until maybe like August or oh not August. Well, you gotta go out to the October, summit, right? November. Oh yeah, wait wait the, the summit. The Se- summit in September. Oh, September. When I go with you guys, Raiders. that's the only time I'm gonna Raiders, be in Vegas. Raiders against the Ravens. That's right. That's right. Um, but there is another trip coming up, and it's at the end of July, and it's called the National, and we're gonna be there, guys. So uh, check it at ch- if you're going to the National, and if you're not, you should think about going. Because it's awesome, it's amazing. Uh, it's a w- and, and I think this year is going to be a once in a lifetime experience. We're going to be there at the Case Break Pavilion booth fifteen fifteen. We're going to be doing free breaks, and we have two new shirt designs that we're going to be unleashing there as well, including a hype shirt. So get excited! We got a hype shirt, and it's amazing. It's going to look phenomenal. For so. everybody that for everybody that you know w- w- listens to us on podcast and YouTube, we got a shirt for you. Yep, and uh, we're going to definitely have. Because, you know, we do like to market ourselves. Uh, if you get there early and you get the get the shirt and then you wear it like the next day, you're going to get something extra in return because you're like a walking billboard for us. So not only are the shirts super cool because they're like amazing material like this one right here, but you also get free stuff for, for wearing it. So, uh, so yeah, check us out there. And then also we're going to do the free break signups there as well. And we got we got a special guest possibly in the house, a couple special guests. So stay tuned for those uh, uh, details Wait, as a well. A couple? A couple special guests. Yeah, we're working on some. Th- we're working on some stuff and some things. So, um, want to get right into uh, you know the topic that everybody's been talking about in a follow up from last week's show. Single cards are continuing to dip, and uh, we're going to analyze that. You can see the Kobe uh, in April, a Kobe refractor, thirty to thirty five k today, fifteen k to seventeen k. Uh, LeBron as well, and obviously Luca is the one that everybody's been talking about. And last week we said, I said. That I believe Luca was the starter of this whole downtrend. Uh, I think it's an amazing time to buy these refractors. The low pop on the refractors. I'd be buying these if I seen one at 14k. I I buy one. If you have one 14k, call me up. Hit me up. I'll buy one at 14k. I think that's a phenomenal price. I'd be buying like these legends that are going like they're dipping this low. I think it's a phenomenal time to buy. It's getting to the point where we we sold it. I know, right? It's getting to the yeah, point. yeah. It's going back down. <laughs> yeah. Can get it right back. I feel, I feel better. So I just think that uh, some people are panic selling, and especially if you look at the pop reports on some of these items, like we talked about last week, the pop report on if it's if it's a low pop, then they should not be selling for half the price they sold for. It's just people are thinking that the Luca is the whole market. Well, there's there's forty thousand Lucas. There's only X amount of LeBron James refractors. There's there's not an infinite amount of uh, LeBron James refractors. So anybody's got a take on this on the how on these single cards? I actually am surprised at LeBron James because I'm looking on eBay every day, and I rarely I know I I, I rarely see any LeBron James. Now Jordans you see him every day. Luca every minute if you're on eBay you could find a Luca that's ending. Yep. Uh, Kobe, a lot of Co- a lot more Kobe's than LeBron James. Right. Uh, so that surprises me. You know, and it's funny that we're seeing, you know, we're seeing like the 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 crypto market drop. We're seeing stocks are kind of leveled out. I mean, there's some that are dropping some. Is it any coincidence in the crypto market and the card market both dropping? I don't know. At least with a card, you don't have. It's not magic beans. It's a real. <laughs> it's a real tangible item you're holding on to. Right. I. I don't know. I think I'm gonna buy. I bought some. I bought some Bitcoin last night. I know this is oh. well off topic. I bought, and, I, and I'm not a financial advisor, but I did buy some Bitcoin last night. I like and, Bitcoin. Um, I you feel got, like I might you got, buy some more. You guys are crazy, man. <laughs> I love magic beans, man. That's what yeah. I'm all about. I if you're gonna if you're gonna buy the ma- magic beans, at least buy the OG magic Dude, beans. You I know was, what I'm saying? Man, I was so into that like I don't know, like 12 days ago. <laughs> I'm like I've moved on. <laughs> I, I I don't think the uh, crypto market and the sports car market correlate really, but um, you know, it is it is a downtime for both right now. Um, because people are going outside, people are going to Vegas. I think that's that's that the main are. that's the main theory that that you know I've seen comments on our past video too that people are saying you know they think that you know people have 
things to go do now outside of sports cards, right? Or outside of the uh, investing in, in cryptocurrency or stocks. So, I mean, that it's, it's, va it's valid. That's, that's definitely one of the reasons I could see why it, it, it's crazy. I mean, you're right. Cause they're, I mean, people are going out and, and doing what they got to do before my very brief trip that I had this week, last week, I guess. Um, I was actually like, I'm not convinced that the national is going to be attended the way everybody was speculating until I saw how busy Vegas was <laughs> <laughs> and it yeah, will, yes, the, the, the national will break every attendance record in history. Oh yeah. I mean, I just, uh, I just look, I was trying to get another hotel room and none of them that were remotely close were available. So yeah, I just, those are all booked up already. That just tells me how many people are coming down. So um, it's crazy. And also, we do have a giveaway from last week to announce the winner for. Um, we have another giveaway coming up this week as well. Stay tuned. It's going to be prospect related. So get your prospect names ready. We're going to talk prospects here soon. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't know what to think about the attendance. I, I know a lot of people that I know that everybody's going. So everybody that I know in the industry is going to be there. So um, we'll have to see how crazy Rosemont, downtown Rosemont at night. We'll see how loke that place gets i mean we may not even be able to play our our annual breaker football game out there because the field might be just covered with people oh i'm playing it just you're gonna run around people yep <laughs> I'm uh, i'll figure out or gonna... or we could field the first 50 men on each side team <laughs> of breaker 50 versus 50 yeah. I know. that would actually probably be a better way of going about doing it it was the five on five is a little tough for two hours. Yeah, so for you're two saying hours. like just straight up eleven on eleven. We got blockers. We got defensive ends yep. and tackles yep. and linebackers <laughs> and, and coaches. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coaches. <laughs> you got coaches out there. Well, we should get have, a raid, have guys. A, have a draft. I might. Uh, I might take that special guest as my first overall pick, if possible. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fair. It's not fair. We'll see. We'll see. But, yeah, I mean, it, it's interesting to watch the mar card market. But like I said, I'm a buyer at these prices. I've been buying stuff. Um, any of this, like these legends that have dropped, I mean, you may not get another opportunity to get these level prices because these are going to go. People that are buying now are basically going to hold on to it forever. So um, I think there's some panic buying. I think the guys that got new, they got into this hobby, are looking at their net worth going down. And what's the easiest way to get some of it back? Sell a ten to twenty thousand dollar card, right? So I think you're seeing a lot of that going on, and uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we'll see what the national effect has, right? Um, but, but I, I think you always see in a regular year, don't, don't think about last year, but in a regular year, you usually have a dip in the basketball category because what, over. what speculation are you right. going to have? Basketball's over. It's the off season. It's a good time to buy, bad time to sell. Yep. Yeah, and especially the names, that, the, the big names are out now, right? You got LeBron's out. You've got, you know, uh, KD out. So, KD out. I mean... Booker's prices are probably going up. Maybe Giannis's, but Giannis's were low already. So they now. are, and then I mean, what you got Kawhi? Kawhi's, I mean, his price has always been pretty high. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but how about how about Aiton? Aiton had little has to see a little bit of a spike, right? For sure, you, you definitely would think that. Um, I I have one on eBay. I'm asking like 179. It was probably a really good deal. Prism Prism Auto uh, for 179. No one wants it. Somebody offered 159 after the game, so I was like, oh okay. Uh, you know, people are people are starting to pay attention. So, um, yeah, hit us up if you want to buy that card. Just just buy it up. It's on it's on eBay. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk about some stadium clubs. Stadium clubs coming out Friday. It's a it's a set that's near and dear to my heart. It's actually what got me into this hobby in 1991. Stadium Club opened it with my dad, Chase and Frank Thomas, and Jeff Bagwell, building those sets pack by pack. So it's awesome to see every year, and it's some of the best photography. So we're going to have that coming out on Friday. we got breaks on Friday of it. We also have it available at MojoBreakShop.com for a special pre-sale price. So if you go on MojoBreakShop.com, you can get your Stadium Club box and uh, get shipped to your door, and you can pull all these cool cards and chase all these new rookies and stuff like that. So... But on that baseball tip, Wander. Wander Franco has Hall arrived. of Famer. Hall of Famer. <laughs> Already, huh? First ballot, no doubt. Wait, what about Shohei? He, he's, he's the last he, week's news. Nah, he, again, like crypto, it was like 12 days ago. <laughs> Moved on. <laughs> what do you guys think about um, 
Wander and and uh, Cody, if you have that winner from last week, if you want to, I know you wrote that down earlier. If you want to get that one ready, um, Wander uh, Wander Franco has arrived, hit a home run in his uh, first game, and uh, set set the world on fire. Number one prospect. On that was his race. first hit three three run homer. No, it was zero for one. He said then he hit a home run. Second. Wow. Bat. Yeah. So yeah. youngest player in MLB history with uh, two extra base hits in his debut. If you're a Wander owner. Right now, if you bought his first Bowman Auto, you bought his gold or whatever, are you selling or are you holding? Dan, what are you thinking? You know, we, we talk about this a lot where you almost want to sell right before they make their debut. You have that hype. There's the what-if factor. But he got called up, and he kind of kind of delivered, right? He did. But so now do you <laughs> – I, I don't – seeing what, like, some of his, like – autos were going for uh first bowman's uh first bowman paper first bowman paper have you seen what the first bowman paper are going for graded no i i think they're like 300 bucks jeez just have a paper ones. base i think think so so i'm probably i'm probably selling i mean what worries me is it's the raise what raise process i mean you had evan longoria in 2007 that you know kind of had some steam underneath them but there really hasn't been anybody that's sold for the rays in the last like five or ten years except for this guy now is he is it is is he gonna turn the tide for the rays i mean obviously he had a great start but i think i'm selling too what do you think c-rad selling yeah i mean dude i feel like um yeah dude this is the too. moment right like these people have been collecting them for years now and we've been talking about them for years he gets caught up, gets that homer. I think I think it's a good time to sell. Yep, paper base one thirty five. You're right, one hundred and thirty five dollars for the paper base. Well, I think I said three hundred, but well, still that's a yeah. lot more than I would have guessed. One hundred and thirty five. Three hundred would have been ridiculous, dude. Because there's the chrome, so many though. of those. That's probably the chrome. One thirty five is ridiculous, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, one thirty five is pretty crazy. That is a but lot. 300 would have been absolutely ridiculous for how many paper bases are out there. KJ said the pitcher had wander cards. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny if you're like invested in a player and you're like, well, I think I need to add to the stat category here. Uh, I mean, I mean, it's only in, one in game, of, one game for my ERA. Right. Right. <laughs> in terms of people that like athletes that collect sports cards, I think baseball players are the ones that collect the most right out of any sport. Probably it seems like and you get you got you definitely had a new wave of baseball players um, during this this the parallel era where we were calling it the pandemic parallel era. Uh, you had the guy from the Padres, the pitcher with the long, what's the guy with the long hair that plays for the Padres, the, the relief pitcher. He has his own channel. You have the guy from the Royals. I think his name's like Daniel Trillo or Daniel Tillo. Strom is the guy from Strom. the uh, Padres. Matt Strom. Matt Strom. He collects. He he breaks. They're uh, Alex Bregman and Kyle Tucker. Yep, yep. They have they have videos. You have uh, Phil Hughes, g- of course. Phil Hughes. You got the guy from the Packers, the running back, AJ AJ Dillon, Dillon. who's who's collecting cards as well. So. Yeah, hey, that would be like a, a reverse Pete Rose kind of, kind of deal, right? If you got a guy that's like, he's not really betting on baseball, but he's betting on the cards. <laughs> he's like, oh, man, I got a Wander Franco Super Fractor. Let me, <laughs> let me just throw, throw a meatball right down the plate. I don't care. I'm going to go ahead and cash out my Super Fractor tonight. Oh, that would be man. wild. I like the concept, though. I don't know. I just feel like these number one prospects have been hitting. Like, you know, like the, the Acunas and the Tatis and the – you know, and and the Vlads, and they're all been hitting. I feel like there's got to be a there's a time where one of them's not going to hit. It but, could it be Wander? But isn't isn't this a great era for for baseball, where you're seeing these top prospects come it, it's up? It's amazing. And like it's amazing. Just delivering. Um, I love the fact that the Rays finally called him up. Um, I love the fact that he delivered. I love the fact that like baseball is getting younger with the talent. Mm-hmm. So absolutely. I think it's I think it's good. I think it's good for baseball. I think it's good for the hobby. Cody, if you had a Wander Franco uh, first Bowman auto right now, what are you doing with it? Uh, I think I might sell, but I also feel like I might regret it because you know what I was thinking about is like Juan Soto for me is like an example of like 
you should probably hold even if you think, well, the team's not that exciting. Like Washington Nationals, that's, I mean, you had Steven Strasburg and Bryce Harper, so I guess there's a little more of a tradition of like top prospects in that organization. But you go from a guy like Juan Soto who was not really heralded at all to like he's one of like the two or three most wanted guys for mm-hmm. baseball card collectors. So I think like if Wander can have a rookie season, that's like absolutely incredible. And I don't really think there's any reason to believe that he won't have that type of season the way he's performed. Uh, I think maybe one, two years from now, he might be he's, he would pay off. But I, I think if I had it in my hands, I would still probably sell it. I, I, I couldn't help myself. I'd probably sell it now. And he is 20, which is crazy. He's 20. It's kind of that Juan Soto territory, being super young, getting that, getting, making that debut, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just had to refresh myself on the top 100 prospect list, which is going to lead, lead us into our new giveaway for this week. Make sure you co- comment on Mojo Break Media on the video here. And uh, which prospect are you buying now that Wander's been called up? Which prospect are you into? So make sure you comment below on the video with your pick. And we're going to pick a win at winner at random. And I'm looking at the list right now, and we got Adley Rushman as, uh, and this is MLB.com's prospect list. I know every every site has their own opinion, but we have Adley Rushman and then Spencer Torkelson, Jared Kelnick, Julio Rodriguez, Mackenzie Gore, Bobby Witt Jr., C.J. Abrams, Nate Pearson, and Christian Pache. I'm actually very surprised that they have Adley uh, seconds. Uh, but he is also one of the oldest on the list, so maybe a little bit more season played in college. Um, and then Spencer Torkelson. Really no pitchers besides Nate Pearson, all position players. So. Mackenzie Gore. Oh, uh, McKen- Mackenzie Gore. I feel like Mackenzie Gore has been on the prospect list forever for the Padres. Um, any of those names, Cody, strike you as uh, the next guy to collect? I feel like Torkelson is the obvious choice here. And I think it's also because the Tigers – are going to have a lot of momentum, I think, in the next few years with Torkelson. Casey Mize is already up in the big leagues. Riley Green as well. I think it's an organization on the right path, and we've seen that when they're ready to win, they're never afraid to spend money. So Torkelson coming up, they add some free agents. I think that he could be like the next superstar, power-hitting superstar in baseball. Yep. And I noticed that we've got C.J. Abrams on the list at number eight. Yeah. And he plays shortstop. Yep. And, and he's on the Padres. And I think, and he's probably my pick, him and Bobby Witt. Yeah. Uh, Abrams, I think, is legit, but you're right. Where does he play? I don't know if he makes his debut on the Padres. Right. But he might be the piece for a <clears throat> midseason deal trying to get, like, I don't know. I, Padres are loaded. What do they need? A Maybe another rotation guy, right? So, but, so, but it could be like, there's there's teams that he could go to that could just be like the remember that like the, the like if he gets traded to the A's, death, it's death to prospects. <laughs> Sorry, C Red. It's just like any guy that gets traded to the A's, prospect is dead. Is Bowman's dead? You're just I like, like Abrams. Oh. I like I like Bobby Witt. <laughs> Royals are another one of those teams. At least his card is already the. I like I like Bobby Witt too. You know, it'd be interesting to see. And I wish I had this data before we went live, but like, who's the cheapest, lowest prospect, right? Like the cheapest first Bowman auto. It might be Kelnick, nah, because well, because of what he did when he got his first taste in the big leagues. I think he is probably the most undervalued on that list. But I think at this point, that's almost justified. I mean, he went back to AAA with what, like an O for thirty six? Yeah, on his yeah. way back to AAA. So you, you buy the dip. <laughs> That's a pretty big dip. You may never hit again, <laughs> but you buy it. I mean, J-Rod, I mean, maybe people are overlooking J-Rod now because they've been focused in on Kelnick. I don't know. I mean, I'd probably I obviously the obvious one that's probably the cheapest is Nate Pearson, which might be a sneaky buy because the Blue Jays, I mean, the way the the way that uh, they've been playing and the way that uh Vlad's been playing, maybe if they get into the postseason and Nate Pearson could 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 have a big game, it might be that's a, a real sneaky one because I'm, I'm sure he's him and Mackenzie Gore got to be by far the cheapest. That are yeah, on this well, list. I don't like their positions. I know. I'm just saying you could probably get 10 of them compared to one Bobby Witt or CJ Abrams or any of these guys on this list. But uh, yeah, so interesting to see. We also, uh, Cody, we're going to talk about some uh, prospects in other sports. Give us a little introduction and we'll have uh, an overall discussion on like, you know, who, who, who should we invest in in the other sports? 
Yeah, obviously. Yeah, it's uh, First off, yeah, like you said, we're doing another giveaway. Let us know your favorite prospect. Whoa, Chuck was our winner for last week for the soccer box. So let us know uh, in the comments. I'll, or we'll hit them up in the comments for last week's YouTube video as well. But, yeah, go on motorbreak.com and contact us. Whoa, Chuck, congratulations. Uh, these prospects, the four that you see on the slide, Wander Franco, you know him, five-tool superstar, potential superstar for the Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, he just he, he could be the next great player in baseball. I, I don't really think it's that crazy to even say that. Cade Cunningham is going to be the number one pick in the NBA draft. The lottery was last night. Uh, they showed a video of him already being like, all right, Detroit sounds good. So we already know he's going to be on the Detroit Pistons who are building up a lot of young talent. Uh, I've been seeing some comparisons to Cade Cunningham, like uh, Jimmy Butler is a comparison, but I've also seen some scouts compare him to Luka Doncic, wow. which uh, seems like a uh, that that might be a little bit much to put on the young man, but he's the number one pick for a reason. Trevor Lawrence, you know I'm um, Trevor Lawrence. It's Trevor Lawrence. And then Cole Caulfield, <laughs> if you watched Hobby Stars of the Week last week, I talked about this guy, young star on the Montreal Canadiens. He's already got three goals in this uh, semi-final matchup against the Vegas Knights. The Canadians are one win away from the Stanley Cup playoff, Stanley Cup Finals as we sit here. Three goals in the series. His Young Gun cards is going to be in the uh, first set, Series 1, next year for hockey. I think he's going to be super hot for hockey at a time where I think hockey is going to start to rise again in popularity as it gets more eyes on it with going to ESPN, Turner Sports, all that. Absolutely. Is Cole Caulfield, is he 14 or is yeah, he older than that? He looks like yeah. it. Also, he, yeah, he's got like the record for the most goals scored in the USA Developmental League. And wow. like the names he was over was like Austin Matthews, Phil Kessel, like really established Jeez. names uh, for USA hockey fans. So he's a USA born player playing in Montreal. Really good mix, I think. That's what's up. That's well, what's up. Now, I'm going to flip this to C-Rad. Uh, we see see Mr. Number One here going to the Pistons. Detroit. Um, mm-hmm. Do you? I mean, I I feel like I haven't talked about any Piston rookie, maybe outside Andre Drummond, in the last ten years. Yeah, this is this will be the, the Pistons. Um, one obviously one of their highest picks, probably one of their best picks that they've the uh, best you know young young guys that they've ever gotten in a long time. So it's going to be interesting to see um, how they re- rebuild the team around him. I mean, they've already started cleaning house, right, with the getting rid of Griffin and Drummond and D Rose. So, yeah, uh, I think I think it's gonna be uh, um, exciting time for Pistons fans. And um, yeah, and he seems to be no, like just labeled as the guy, right? He's so, the guy. Like he's yeah. the Zion of the draft. There's no question about like like last year was it Edwards? Was it Ball? Was it Wiseman? Yeah, there's no you question. Know, this this year is this guy. So that's good. And it, I feel bad for the Pistons fans who finally get their chance here because it seems like they always were like the seventh AC seed <laughs> where they're getting like the fifteenth pick, <laughs> and it's just never like you're just never yeah. getting a lottery pick here. And and now they're now they're getting that chance. Well, for to, a long um, time, you know, they were used to kind of winning in the East, right? And then. Uh, um, you know that, that, and because of that, then they wouldn't get any high draft picks, right? And then, and then, you know, obviously the things have been haven't been working out for them the last decade, really. But and they still haven't been getting the high draft picks. So this is their first one, and uh, you know, sh- as if I was a Pistons fan, I'd be excited. Um, actually, the top five, all top five guys that are projected to go for in the NBA draft this year are supposed to be really good. Yeah, I heard it's not like uh, there's not like a totally like generational talent. Well, you know, it's all speculation, but there's. A lot of solid, like overall. Well, solid I'll tell you players. what: if, if this Cade Cunningham, it, it, even if he's like half a Luka Doncic, he's gonna he's gonna be pretty damn good. Where if, does if the, they're comparing him to Luka Doncic, where does the guy in the G League that has the upper deck cards already? Where does he fall? He, he, like five? He's definitely in the top five. Top he's five. he's a lot of pick for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if he's gonna be in top five or not, but he's a lot of pick for sure. Is it Gerald so, Green? Gerald Green? Gerald something? Not Gerald Green. No, it's not Gerald Green. Please, Jalen. Jalen Green. Jalen Green, yeah. Mm-hmm. Who's got some, some good size and some good athletic ability at the age he's already playing. And, and did the uh, non-traditional college, went to the G League instead. So we'll see if that pans out. But, Dan, if you had to push all your chips in, in the theme of Vegas, on and maybe it's on somebody that's not in here, but on this picture, but who, who, are, you, who are you picking? Hmm. Uh, I mean, Wander Franco, I think, is the – the easy one right even though i was like sell but i mean i think in in three years four years we might be like best player in baseball 
Now, is that going to translate to Juan Soto or Acuna numbers? It should, but there is no guarantee. Soto won a championship. Acuna has been on good teams. Right. So even if Wander Franco is amazing, and the Rays are good, if I'm not mistaken, the Rays are good. Well, they were the well bubble year, but they were the first seed last year, right? They were the they represented so, the American league. So, I think Wander's the safe pick. Uh, still going to go with a guy that I I think is going to be maybe the best quarterback in the draft, and that's Mac Jones. What? Yeah. <laughs> yep. He came out of nowhere. I know. <laughs> Jeez. I know. How about that? Wow. Wow. Yeah, I was and like, we're gonna Trevor. L- what? Nope. Nope. Wow. Well, you are you a fan of Belichick or something? Is that what you're doing? <laughs> he well, he's proven. Is he's he? proven. Not yeah. Without Tom Brady. He. <laughs> yeah. You're no, mad. The, you're the, mad. The, you're mad. I didn't. I didn't say your boy. Oh, I knew you weren't going to go that route, but I thought for sure you were going to go Trevor Lawrence. No. No. Mac Jones. You know, it's hard for me to pick any of the. I mean, I'm almost half tempted to lean towards the kid on the Canadians because this guy's playing at a high level in the playoffs. And the young guns is, you know, I mean, he'll probably, if he comes out at Laffy prices, it's like two to 300 bucks, right? So you're not getting invested too much in it. Um, I don't know. I'm almost tempted to go that route because the guy's already in the. He's, he might go to the cup. I mean, if he wins the cup, then it's just pure pen. Uh, but the, right? only, yeah. the only thing about the hockey guys who get that late call up and then end up going on a pretty substantial like Stanley cup run. A lot of times they fizzle out going into next year. Yeah. We saw it with, uh, I know a defenseman, but a couple of years ago with the Bruins, Tory Krug. Yeah. yeah. Remember like yeah. his cards were going through the roof. He was having like yeah. a really, really good Stanley cup playoff run. And then his cards just fizzled out the next year. Was it was he a late late like um insertion like this this kid here or it, you know yeah it's it, hockey hockey's weird cuz like this kid could have been drafted. Did we say when he was drafted? Probably probably a couple years ago, right? Yeah, I want to say it was like 18 or 19. Yeah, so but he hasn't had any official young guns card yet. No, because he probably got called up late. And he like, doesn't have any cup RPAs yet either. No, no, he doesn't have anything. No. So they, they'll basically run him out as the poster boy for next year. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming. I thought I actually thought that he might have been in uh, the update because update, they're doing a hockey update series. Yeah, but no, they're going to hold him in, which makes me feel that like there may not be a Lafreniere or anybody like that next year, and they're going to try to use this player to drive Series 1. My cat fell. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I'm, I'm tempted to, to go that route. Um, I'm also, I know he's not necessarily a prospect, but I, I've seen how low John Morant's prices have gone. Like, it's almost like nobody's even buying John Morant anymore. It's like, did we not see him get into the playoffs by beating the Warriors? And then put on a pretty good show in that first round. Granted, it didn't get past it, but it, John Morant, with a little bit of help on that team, Memphis is 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 going. You know, so I, I feel like I, I think I bought a silver, or silver was like three, four hundred bucks for a PSA nine. It was like, what happened, right? I'm starting to think it's it's partly because of that market, the, the Memphis Grizzlies market. Could be. Yeah, I Could think that, that that has a part of playing it because obviously he's one of the best young players in the NBA right now. Which, I mean, scares me about you. You're right. Market means everything when it comes to the hobby. Yeah, you could look at their stats, and, and, and their, but the market adds to it. And you got Trevor Lawrence playing for the Jaguars. I know Tim Tebow's there drawing some attention on Tim Tebow. <laughs> we'll see if he makes a team. But, like, when's the last time a Jaguar sold in the hobby? You know? I mean, Blake Bortles, maybe? Fournette? Yeah. Uh, Leonard, I mean, he didn't really sell. He, for a running during, back, he during, did. During his rookie season. Yeah, yeah during his rookie bit. year, he sold. But it's bit. like, you know, the Jaguars don't seem to sell. I'm almost wondering, you know, who I want to keep an eye on is Zach Wilson. I mean, if 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 the Jets perform, that is a market. And then you have Gary V, who loves, you know, I, I Gary V will be Jets. talking about him, and then yeah. Gary V, whatever he says, the hobby listens. So, uh, you know what? What's funny to me that I've noticed with this upcoming football season is that Zach Wilson actually gets the most hate out of all the quarterback prospects. 
like people hate him the most, or not necessarily hate him, they believe in him the the least. Yeah, he's getting overlooked because it's either like you got. I'm, I mean, you got you. You obviously have you know this guy that's here, Trevor Lawrence, and then you got a lot of people love Fields, and then a lot of people like myself, the ben goat Trey Lance. Jones. And then if, you got Mac Jones. So nobody but, talk about the second overall pick. No, I mean, well, yeah. Um, no, I mean, but the Jets like they they need to get one right to turn over that culture of yeah. everybody being like they'll never get a franchise quarterback. Yeah. Well, they did get that it right. That makes sense before. to me. They got it right. Before. But Joe Namath? Yes. Yeah. They got it right before. <laughs> hey. That, I don't think a lot, the Lions have never got it right. Now they got Jared Goff out. There, no, so. they did. They got it right. Stafford is it wasn't his fault. I mean, there's teams that wish they had 40 years ago. They had I mean, look at the Browns would have loved to have somebody 40 years ago. I mean, I don't even know if they were Baltimore back then. I don't know. <laughs> but, you know. Um, but anyways, yeah. So, I mean, it, it, it's interesting to see with all this stuff coming out. Big football season coming up. Possible big basketball season. You got Wander Franco. You got baseball. Probably has the brightest young talent. Probably the f- most young talent in the last, I don't know, 10 years it feels like. You know, because we had the Jeters and the Chipper Jones, and it's like, who's going to be next? And we never did. We, we felt like there wasn't enough talent. Now you've got so much young talent that's here to stay for many years to come. And you had a lot of those players in, like, the, you know, early 2000s that, like, performed for such a long time. Yeah. The Albert Pujols's and the Todd Helton's and the Ichiro's and, like, all those, like, they were the superstars, and they were the superstars for over a decade. Yeah. Now I feel that we're getting – baseball is getting a lot younger with the with the talent. And a lot of these – you go back 15 years, it was probably unheard of to call up a 20-year-old. Right. Yeah, it never like happened. You, you 24. Wouldn't, you wouldn't like, do it. Yeah. I mean, I remember – I think Harper – I want to say he made his debut, and he was probably – 2021 20, uh, i believe he was like 18 or 19 18 yeah. I, he did 19 years old i believe but he did one year in i did yeah he he didn't go to college he no did, he went to like a he went to a community college yeah so that he could skip get, and i think get, he get had one eligible. full season in the minors and then he got called up the next spring training so yeah 19 years old in 2012 yeah when he made and was soto 19 too yeah but you're right, like the Will Clarks and stuff like that. They usually like seasoned in the in the in the, in the minors. But uh, you know, and Chris in the chat asks, "Are we selling Otani yet?" I want to sell him. <laughs> I want to sell Otani. I I literally I'm the, ready. The worst news for Otani happened last week when he basically said he was going to join the home run derby. I know that's not good. Uh, it it never works out. Um, uh, I, I'd probably sell now. Actually, I and I hate saying that. At least in le- unless you want to hold on for like the long haul, like you basically want to hold on for two, three, four years. But if you're, I think I think he is gonna have now. A do bad you wait for the Homer Derby to see what happens, or do you sell before it? I sell before it. Now, what if he defies expectations again? Like you know, he's the only. Guy that pitches and hit, and then he goes out his I, and then his play stays at the same level. I don't think, after. There, I don't think there's any way <laughs> that he is going to be able to after after the All Star game, he will go through that home run derby slump. It messes with your swing. I wouldn't. Yeah, it's I like, know. I, I I'm a firm believer. I mean, it, you've seen it happen with Aaron Judge. You've seen it happen with Cody Bellinger. You've seen it happen with. Um, I think it was uh, was it Vlad Jr. Uh, Vlad Jr. took a ton of swings. Uh, <clears throat> I think he lowered his ERA today, though, because I think uh, as it looks like they're in the tenth inning and there's only been one run. Six innings, one earned run, I believe. For yeah, him today. So. Let, let me ask you guys a question guys. then, because it's feel, it's it's obvious to you guys, right, that watch baseball and then you guys and have seen year after year like these guys who enter the home run derby and they're um, hitting changes, right, mm-hmm. or it, it diminishes a little bit after the home run derby. Wh- Aren't these teams that are like telling their players to like won't won't? Don't you think these teams are like saying maybe you shouldn't join the home run derby because? Oh, I I think without a doubt. But now, when Aaron Judge did it, I think the Yankees were they were in at least a division race, and they they ended up going to the playoffs that year. And I think they actually went pretty far in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. But he fell off. Like he basically just ran out of steam. I think he was getting a little injured, but I, 
I think if your team is competitive, I think you probably have a GM whispering in your ear like, hey, don't do it. But it's also good for the team. Right? Yeah, It's good. It'll be great for the Angels to have Shohei Otani on that stage. Now, are the Angels going to turn it around and win the division? Probably not. So go for it. Yeah. Now, Otani is like one of those guys that like I would – Never have him do it because he does pitch. He is hitting bombs. I mean, I would just, I would try to avoid that. Yeah, and he made history today by the first American League team that chose to not use a DH when the National League utilized one. So uh, they he pitched today, and he hit today when they could have had him pitch and then not hit, and most teams would obviously do that. But because he plays both ways, he does very well at both. He's, he, he did both today. So... Um, he is 26 too. We got to keep that in mind. I know it's not super old, but like, you know, it's not like Wander Franco either. You know I mean? And he had some miles on him from the Japan league and WBC and all that stuff as well. So I don't know. It, it's a tough call because nobody's ever done this. I mean, I, I, I'm thinking let's sell. May not have another opportunity. Now, if he wins the home run derby, right? Then you got a bump. You, you, get get a, bump, you get a bump. Yeah. You get a bump. But you, if he wins it, I, I, man. Like, actually, the best thing for, like, the longevity of him is that he doesn't even get past the first round. Yeah. If I could play devil's advocate for a second, I think the home run derby thing is uh, a little bit overhyped. I don't think I, – I, I think there's been a couple of cases where guys have either done well in the home run derby or won the home run derby – and fall off, but I think if you were to take like everybody's ever been in the home run derby and look at their second half stats, I don't think we'd be as shocked with there wouldn't be as big of a fall off as you'd expect. I think there'd be like the normal like second half of a season drop off, but I think True. it's a little over. Yeah, maybe not as uh, Chris says, not not much like Madden curse. Maybe it's not like that deep. You know? and, <laughs> and I think too, remember when Bobby Abreu is going way back, like 2005. Bobby Abreu hit like 30 home runs in the home run derby, and he literally had like 10 up to that point, and it was weird he was even in it. And then he <laughs> hit like zero home runs in the second half. And so I think ever since then that narrative has grown. But I I, I don't really think that it it's as extreme as we think. Yeah, he used them up. He used them up. I just you know as a as a former you know baseball player myself i just feel like you don't swing that way in games repetitively that many times so i just feel like it kind of changes the way you swing um but I, i'm also not a pro i was never a professional ball player Could we just, give know. these kids aluminum bats <laughs> then you wouldn't have to swing 100 percent agree let's do aluminum bats. 650 foot especially at coors field this year you'll hit 700 foot home runs Jeez. yeah yeah Jeez. But i also you wouldn't. I, I mean, I, I. Granted, that would also probably change your swing as well. Yeah. One last thing about the show, Shohei thing and the the home run. I think it's a uh, because he does play both the, like pitching and hitting. I think it's a little bit more dangerous. A little, just a little bit more dangerous than any other else doing the the home run derby, right? In terms of if that's actually the thing where somebody is um, playing worse after the home run derby, I think it applies to him a little bit more because he does pitching as well. Yeah. No, these guys do do batting practice, but I don't think they're trying to hit home runs yeah they're, they're not trying to hit a ball they're trying to get familiar with the field they're trying to hit you know differently i know the giants don't even throw meatballs they throw different types of pitches so that the player the, the hitters can get used to to swinging at the stadium and seeing different types of pitches so I, I think it's a little bit different of an approach when you're just trying to come out your shoes and you're having your pitcher throw you a straight meatball and you're doing it like <laughs> you know obviously these guys are athletes and their their bodies are probably ready for it but it's but you different. hear, like, any player that goes on a good streak of hitting during a season, they're never doing a post-game interview saying, well, I was just trying to go yard. Right. I was just trying to hit a home run. Usually it's like, I'm just trying to put a good swing on it. You go to the home run derby. You're trying to go yard. They're trying to go yard. Yep, yep. It's not well, called the base hit derby. Right, exactly. Well, let's, uh, let's not get too disappointed about Shohei because he's having a crazy year, but – you know who the guy I am disappointed with? Mr. Benjamin Simmons. I've been been holding on to hope. I 16, 17, he he was upper deck exclusive, so I decided that we're gonna get involved and we're gonna buy some of his prism cards because he doesn't have autographs from Panini. He only has the prism cards because he's 
you know, so they're going to be rare, more rare. And, and he's just such a specimen. He's a point guard, almost seven feet and all this stuff. And I know he can't shoot, but he'll figure it out. And I don't think he'll ever figure it out. <laughs> I don't think he'll ever figure out how to shoot free throws. <laughs> I don't think he'll ever figure out how to shoot it. Um, just I don't think he'll ever turn it around personally. I know we got some pros and cons on the screen here, but I am done with Ben Simmons. There is one that, like, jumps out at me that <laughs> – Worst, is that free throw shooter in NBA playoff history? Yes. He's Pretty the wor worst to ever do it. Worst to ever do it. <laughs> Minimum of 67 attempts. We'll beat uh, Wilt Chamberlain and Shaquille O'Neal, by oh. the way, for that distinction. Wow. And those guys have championships. Yeah, I just, you know, I mean, I think the, the 10 free throws missed in that one game where they lost by six, absolutely horrible. And the just bad decision making you're right under the rim and you pass the ball when nobody on you hmm. it's just I, I just don't know that if, if, if he's in his head i mean like i say he's a supreme athlete well, well, probably one of the best specimens we've seen um with the ability of his dribbling and the way that he can kind of do a lot of different things but just i don't just don't I just, we can't trust the process anymore <laughs> we can't and i think as a philly fan you got to be just pulling your hair out of this guy mm. i feel so bad for philly fans because it's like Every year you're there, and this year seemed like it might have been an easier path to get there. Mm -hmm. You got no Braun. You got no Curry. You know, you get in there. You get to the finals. It's probably yours for the taking, and you lose to the Hawks. Um, and props to the Hawks. I mean, uh, Trey Young played an amazing series. Uh, Kevin Herter is uh, – people loving him over there in ATL. But what do you think about Ben Simmons there, C-Rad? Um – I mean, the good news is that he's still pretty young, right? Um, yeah, the the shooting thing is something that I think everybody who watches NBA was an or or a collector of Ben Simmons was hoping he would get better, uh, better better with through the years, and it obviously hasn't panned out yet. And I think um, I was watching a few videos this week, and I kind of agree with some some of what they were saying in that it's not necessarily that Ben Simmons can't like you you can imagine he's in the gym shooting practice free throw shooting, and he's probably like in the gym when they're training. He's probably shooting like like probably Steph Curry or something, right? Yeah. But in the game, for some reason, he's afraid to take those shots. Yes. So it it really is like a it really is like a mental thing because in the gym, yeah, like I said, he probably can make these shots, but he's not willing to in the he's game. In his own head. So that that's that's a big issue, and it's been his main issue since he's been drafted, right? He can do everything else. He can he can pass. He can, uh, you know, he can drive at will. He can, you know do everything that you want as a especially your point guard except the one of the most important things as a guard is to shoot the basketball yeah i actually thought ben simmons was going to well lack of a better phrase change the game of basketball i thought we were going to be like in order to compete and win championships you're going to need an athletic seven foot point guard yeah. and it was going to be hard to find them they're mm -hmm. not they're not in every draft but i he just i i think the talent's there i but you were saying i think it's i think it's in his head now yep here's a few cards that we recently sold so we had a big uh, ben simmons collection as you've seen these ones edited in may so i think we cashed out at the right time cuz i i probably would think that these are worth half as much as what we sold them for uh, bought this Mojo Prism at 6,500, so it took a little bit of an L, but got 5,700 back. The Green Select, I think we paid like 1,500 for, so it took a little bit of an L on that, but sold I think about 10 to 15 Ben Simmons cards in um, all that we had because I just was like, this is the time he's in the playoffs. I already had my doubts on him then, and uh, definitely glad that uh, we moved these cards. Um, before all this happened because it might have been it might have been pretty tough so it's funny we like we lost on pretty much all of them but it feels good to move them yeah because <laughs> <laughs> the l could have been bigger that's the why. l yeah well that's what you justify right you yeah. know uh, i just i think he's gonna still be a, a player in this league but not a one two or three i think you know you could see kind of like maybe a lou williams type like six man you know with ben simmons or maybe uh Maybe he'll get, like, best uh, improved player, you know. But I, as far as, like, electricity and being a guy that's going to drive this hobby, I just I can't but see it. do you think, like, if he was put on a different team, it seems like that team is always 
always know, ran around Joel Embiid, right? Yeah. So maybe Ben Simmons is not a good fit with Embiid. And maybe a change of scenario, like a change of scenery scenario where he goes to like, I don't know, like maybe he goes to New York, New York or Detroit with the new draft pick there. And maybe it just freshens him up and he becomes good and can start hitting shots again. Maybe, maybe that's what he needs. You know, I mean, Alex Smith changed scenery a little bit. I know he was on that run with the Niners, but, you know, became a little bit better with the Chiefs. It's like so it's almost as we're pretty much saying that. The Sixers didn't advance because of Ben Simmons. Had a lot to do. Would with they it. have been better if he just did not suit up? That's hard to say. I mean, there was one game, like he said, like he said he missed ten free throws yeah. and they lost by six. You know what's crazy too? Um, I think uh, somebody else on ESPN was saying that in the two playoffs ago, two playoff seasons ago, he was actually shooting seventy percent from free throw line, but then for some reason this year it just like. He totally mentally collapsed and wasn't able to make anything. Like the lowest free throw shoot percentage in NBA playoff of all time, dude. You're talking about so like you're like Wilt Shaq, and then like I'm even thinking about like Ben Wallace. They're like terrible free throws. He's a terrible free throw shooter. He's he's worse than Ben Wallace, bro. You know what I mean? It doesn't make any sense for a guard to be shooting that bad. I know. It, it's just I don't know. But like I said, the good news is that he's young. I'm not a thousand percent giving up on him. Um. I'm I'm just hoping he can prove us wrong. I think wherever he goes. I, I think Philadelphia day. has though. F- Philadelphia has given up on him. I think sure. I think the fan base has given up on him. When, I, when, I think when, it, you know when the fans start burning your jerseys. Yeah, yeah. it's a bad sign. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, think, um, I, I think you got to keep Embiid and blow up the rest of that team. Maybe get a new coach. Uh, keep Embiid and try to build around them and restart long, the process. But how long do you keep Embiid? I know he's he's had his his injury issues, right? Yeah, where he 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 doesn't play a lot. I think I think you break that team down completely. You, completely. Wow. Oh, I don't know about that. Embiid's still picks. one of the best players. He almost won MVP this year. Yeah, that's true. He was second. Embiid should be a warrior. Well, I'm like not going to argue that. Me neither. <laughs> um, so I, we know you guys have all had that. We you know this is us taking an L here right in front of you. We're showing you the statistics on how we, on what we paid and you know the L we took. What's your guys' biggest hobby disappointments? So there's some familiar faces on here. Ooh. You got Ben Simmons, RG3, Johnny Manziel, <laughs> Wiggins. How did Wiggins get up there? Oh, oh, I'm glad he put him on here because if anybody that breaks with me knows, Wiggins is one of my biggest disappointments of all times of my entire life. When you're the number one pick, and yeah, for a number one pick, he's a huge disappointment, I think. I think that's fair. Yeah. Yeah, he's a he. You know what? Uh, Where where's uh where's is Markel? that Bubba, is that Bubba Starling over there? It is okay. Where, where's <laughs> where's Markel <laughs> Fultz? Also very disappointed. Yeah, so I want to hear. You know, and there's no giveaway attached to this, but if you guys want to comment below, I, it's always interesting to see. Like, hey, I was all in on this guy, and look what happened. You know, yeah. I mean, there was a lot. 2014, the hobby wasn't as booming as big as it was, but there was a lot of folks involved with Johnny Manziel. Yeah, and lost, lost their shirt with Johnny. Johnny was the next coming. He was going to turn Cleveland around and had that great-looking autograph, had that great college career, and it's just like money Manziel, baby, and it just didn't work out. Now he's, he's out there doing interviews talking talk about how he, he, he didn't care. He took money for autographs and stuff like that. So What's funny is that, you know, the Browns, you know, now have Baker May. They're, like, almost the same type of person, personality-wise. It Except, seems like, yeah. And then, but then Baker Macon is actually able to win, win on the field. Well, and I look at I look at that, and I look at the era of the hobby. There wasn't as much buzz or money in the hobby. People would have took a way bigger oh, L. Oh, yeah. If Johnny, Man- like if Johnny Manziel was a rookie in 2019, 2020. Oh, yeah. I mean, because I, I mean, you could still get – when Flawless came out, I think I bought a Flawless Auto – Maybe a year after first year flawless too. First year flawless, but maybe a year after Johnny Manziel, and I bought it for like 150 bucks. It was like just a different. I well, I remember you know back then I remember seeing Johnny's prices and being like, wow, these are crazy for 2014. Right. Yeah. They were crazy, but it was like what what was a Johnny Manziel in TRPA maybe. Fifteen hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. That's what I mean. It was like fifteen hundred. Like, like in, tw- cont- in, in twenty like- in twenty twenty, that same RPA would have been seventy five thousand. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Matthew in the chat mentions Andrew Luck, which oh I w- which I was just about to comment on RG three. I mean, did did <clears throat> Shannon did Shannon Daddy did he ruin his career? 
Because he, he, he was – they just imagine, if, if this was last year, this guy went to the playoffs, fought through an injury, and, and went to a playoff game as a rookie quarterback. I mean, luck did too, but, um, you know, he was in there. And then basically he shouldn't have been playing and got re-injured, and then the rest is history. Like, yeah. He probably shouldn't have been in that playoff game. Yeah. Um, and uh, there's a lot of people – I mean, he, he was like the perfect – he was kind of Mahomes before Mahomes, right? He was the guy, RG3 was going to be the guy that could run and throw accurately, and he's going to be the next, like the hybrid of like God, the yeah. best He was the best quarterback that, that rookie year. He, Jesus. Was, he was good. You would have told me in 2012, fast forward to 2021, the best rookie quarterback was Ryan Tannehill. Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson, Ryan Tannehill. Yeah. But Ryan Tannehill is the one where – because Russell Wilson, he he was the starter his rookie year out of training camp, but it was a surprise. Yeah, yeah. But Tannehill, had, but converted what receiver? I think he was a receiver in college. He played one year quarterback. Yep, yep. Yeah, I, I, but I, I thought. People, remember, a lot of people were high on him. Nick Foles was in that draft too. Nick Foles, but um, like I, I thought, I thought we were going to look at Andrew Luck, and he was going to be. One of the all-time greats. Oh yeah, I mean, and he he fought through it, and obviously those injuries caught up been. with him. Yeah, and he had some great great years too. Yeah, he had some amazing years, and and are we completely one hundred percent sure he's never coming back? I'm not one hundred percent sure. He ain't coming back. He ain't coming back. He Anybody think he's back. coming back out there? I I don't think I don't I don't think you could look at Andrew Luck and necessarily think that feel like he's a he was a disappointment. I think he gave all he could, and he had some great years for Indianapolis. Um, you know, just injuries cut his career short, and and he, him himself, you know, he walked away from from the game. So, oh, we got Lonzo Ball in the chat. Uh, I don't know about Lonzo Ball being the biggest disappointment. I'm still a Lonzo Ball guy, but yes, I could see where he didn't live up to the second overall pick. And then uh, Jamarcus, Jamarcus Russell. I don't know that. You <laughs> you were probably glad you were people, collecting in 2007. People keep bringing up that name. I don't know who the hell this guy is. Like, who, you, who the hell is Jamarcus Russell? <laughs> Man, how many game? How many games did he play as a Raider? Four, five. I don't know. Zero to me in the, my head. The, I the, mean, the story that came out recently that they gave, they were giving him tapes to watch. Obviously, maybe back then it was VHSs. They were giving him tapes to watch plays, so, and they didn't think he was watching them, so they gave him a blank one. And he came back. He's like, yeah, I love that defensive scheme that you guys had out there. And it was a blank tape. Was literally, he didn't even put it in. He didn't even watch it. And, uh, <laughs> man. Um, 25 starts, by the way. 25 <laughs> starts. Wow. Seven and 18. Uh, 18 touchdowns, 23 interceptions. I don't remember that time period at all. <laughs> How many touchdowns? 18 touchdowns compared to 23 picks. That's uh, There's the worst stat lines out there. Yeah. Didn't he just show up to camp his rookie season? He was like, like that, like eighty pounds heavier than when he was he drafted. Was. And then I think there was some purple drink allegations. He was doing the, um, I think it's the codeine and um, something, Co- codeine and some kind of thing mixed together, and it it was very popular during that that era. Uh, he might have been making it right there in that photo that we're looking at. Uh, but yeah, I mean. And that was the year that Calvin Johnson and Adrian Peterson were drafted. So there was a lot of people that were like, I don't want Calvin Johnson or Adrian Peterson. I'm all in on Jamarcus. Crazy, right? Crazy. Uh, and I'm sure we'll have more of these stories. That's why maybe, it's like. Maybe the, at least with quarterback, maybe the biggest bust in the history of the NFL draft. How about Ryan Leaf? I think Ryan Leaf played a lot longer, though. And I, I but he was taken before Peyton Manning, right? Am I correct? Or was Peyton he, Manning taken first? Peyton was first. Yeah. Okay. So he was second. Uh, he's only forty-five. He could have just he could almost still be playing Ryan Leaf. But uh, twenty-one starts for Ryan Leaf versus how many was it for Jamarcus? It was uh, twenty-five. But Four fourteen times. touchdowns and thirty-six interceptions. For mm, okay. Well. <laughs> So, actually, yeah, Ryan Leaf might have a worse stat line. Than but Marcus. Ryan Leaf did get another chance with Dallas, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. And Dallas. I don't think anybody gave Jamarcus Russell another chance. No, I don't think. I think he had some tryouts, but it never, stu- it never stuck. So, 
Um, but yeah, well, we got one last little uh, thing. It's guess that price, the ever so popular guess that price. So I will let Cody take over here, and uh, we're gonna see who wins. I I'm putting m my money on me. All right, <laughs> we're just making it uh, a, a quick round here. Uh, some of the guys we talked about today, starting with Wander Franco. This is a 2019 Bowman Heritage Gold Refractor on card auto, numbered to 50, and it's PSA 10. Wow, that is. Did I win last time? And when did this sell? Recently? This was, yeah, very recently, within the last couple of days. Did so I win the last Gisser Price, the unofficial one? Or did I lose that? I, was, I, 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 I didn't. I didn't win. Cody won last. The one, scorekeeper right? was not keeping score, unfortunately, for that one in the exhibition match. I know I lost the one. The last the, official match, yes, I. What? what year is it? 2019. So this isn't a first Bowman. It's not a rookie. It's just. What do you guys think in the chats? Game. I already wrote mine down. So, what do you guys think? Guess that price. Gold Wander Franco Bowman Heritage. Okay, I got my price. And uh, who wants to lead it off? I'll start. Twenty thousand. Wow, we're we're we're, wow. <laughs> we're a little far off here. Wow, Th thirty-five hundred, thirty-two fifty. Ooh, we're pretty close. Ooh, boy, this might be the closest one we've ever had. So that means you lost. <laughs> actual <laughs> actual price <laughs> on the dot, Doug, thirty-five hundred dollars. Wow, that's, I just I mean that shows you I don't off. pay attention to baseball <laughs> at all. <laughs> You were thinking of regular gold, I think. Yeah, regular I was probably gold. thinking about the first Bowman or something. Yeah, and it actually, like, I think it might be the same photo. It does look like the first Bowman photo, but oh well. On the flip side, Ben Simmons. This is also a PSA 10. This mm. also just sold recently. Tri-Color Select Prism Rookie. 2016 Rookie PSA 10. Dude, is that the first year of the Tri-Colors? 15, 15. Crazy. No, not, they had tricolors in 15 season. No, not numbered. This is a non-numbered card, and it did sell within, I believe this did sell either just before or just after the Sixers were eliminated. Mm. Right around there. Is there negative on eBay? or? <laughs> yeah, you have to pay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Non-bot in the chat the... already ahead of you saying $1. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let me start this off. $475. Jeez. I, I wanted to put a dollar just because I hit he's trash, but I put 175. Oh! <laughs> Dan also put 175. 175. Give me, give me the trophy, uh, uh, Cody. <laughs> Actual price $227.50. So Doug and Dan both Dan won. Tie. So do we get like a half point, I guess? Yeah, you get a half point. And like, tie for that that's one. not benefit. That doesn't benefit me at all. <laughs> So you have yeah, – nobody can win. Curiously, at his peak, what does Duggan. that go oh, for? Oh, yeah, Doug in. At, at Ben Simmons' peak, what does that actually go for? At the peak of 500, his 500? Maybe, 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 yeah, okay. eight, eight maybe. I'm shocked that it went for – it went for $200 more than I would have paid. Um, that That's a lot of money for, for a guy that literally can't shoot free throws and can't <laughs> shoot at all either. I mean, he, he, just a guy that can dribble and steal the ball every once in a while. <laughs> All right, last one. This is this will just be for fun, or actually, I guess we Ooh. technically. Anyway, we'll we'll figure out how who wins this. Johnny Manziel first Bowman on card auto did in they, his pod, in a Padres uniform. Did they take a picture from a helicopter? Uh, yeah, I don't know <laughs> what a Bowman. I don't know I, what is I, going I, on I, here. I I I remember that. Yeah, that was a cool card. And it does say for the listeners at home, Johnny Baseball. He wrote Johnny Baseball, and then his. Why auto. wouldn't he? <laughs> what did it sell recently? This so uh, I actually didn't see when this sold, uh, but and it's a refractor. It is a refractor. It's a first Bowman Chrome refractor. Johnny Manziel in a Padres uniform. I'm assuming throwing out the first pitch. His position is listed as, sh as shortstop. <laughs> All right. I guess uh, since I've been winning, I'll go first. I put a hundred and one dollars. All right. I put three hundred and seventy-five dollars. Put seventy-seven dollars. I think there's people who still like them. Actual price. This sold for five dollars less than that Ben Simmons card. Two hundred and twenty-two dollars. So I believe that would be Dan. I think would have the. Would that be right? I'm doing trying to do the quick math. In my head. Uh, what did I? I put three seventy-five. No. Oh no. So I seventy-seven dollars. Yeah, All right, Doug. 
Doug is the winner. The right, sweet. I told you. Put your money on me. So are you telling me a Johnny Baseball refractor chrome <laughs> sold more than an active NBA player <laughs> who's <laughs> one of the top ten players at his position probably still? For $5 less. If you, for $5 more, you could have gotten that Ben Simmons card, or you can get this Johnny Menzel autographed baseball card. And I think as an investment, it's about the same. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Yeah. Ben Simmons has got to be worth more than Johnny Baseball. He's got to be. I think. I think there. I mean, there may be more people who collect, still collect Johnny Football. Yeah, that's crazy. I did not think it was going to be that close. Uh, well, which one would you rather have, Ben Simmons? <laughs> Think I think I it. might. I think I might go Johnny. So, that's like that's a cool. Too. That's there's a cool a, card. There's a certain novelty to that. card. <laughs> that's a cool card. It is. Look how he's smiling. He's probably thinking in the photo that he should have played baseball. Probably would have had a better career. That Crazy. is it. And I don't. Did we even pull one of these? I don't think we did. No. Right? I think it was really you, tough. You, you have to pull one of these out of regular Chrome football. No, it was uh, 2014 Chrome baseball. Oh. Yeah. What the hell was he doing in that product? They just had him sign because i think the padres actually drafted him it it was get johnny manzel in every product yeah yeah, yeah johnny exactly. never says no to signing they threw him <laughs> in Win- they threw him in a wimbledon because he somehow went to a game one day no i'm just kidding wimbledon product but yeah johnny football I and mean, you could see that auto though too that, that auto was special that auto said i'm gonna be a great at what i do but no didn't work out but anyways, once again, pick your favorite prospect. We're going to give a box away of Select Baseball, 2021 Select Baseball. Put your favorite prospect that's not named Wander Franco, who you think you're buying, who do you think is going to be the next number one guy. Put it in the comments below on the Mojo Break Media video, and we'll pick a winner, winner at random for that. We're doing these giveaways every week, so keep make sure you guys tune in. MojoBreak.com for your breaks if you want to get into a Select Break, and then MojoBreakShop.com if you want to get some wax. So we're doing some pre-orders. Uh, Noir is flying off the shelf. We have pre-orders on Noir. Uh, we also have pre-orders on Stadium Club. It comes out Friday. We have pre-orders on Museum Club. So always you can catch some good deals on some pre-sales at mojobreakshop.com. All right, that is it for the hype. We'll see you next week for episode number 196. Peace.